it is exciting to be here. Thank you so much for that ovation. I did not deserve, but thank you. You guys are absolutely tremendous. You've put me in an even better mood than I was already in because you see, it's a good time in my life, everybody. From my heaviest, everybody, from my heaviest, I've lost 75 pounds. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate you not clapping down front at all. That's nice. He's like, come back when you lose a few more fatty, I'll clap for you then. It's like, hashtag still fat. I'm working on it. Met my wife, everybody, when I weighed 335 pounds. Did I hear somebody say wow out there? Seriously, I heard that. I heard that, that was so inappropriate. That made me feel like a circus animal up here. You know, like, wow, I didn't know they got that big, wow. That's huge, wow. Think it was hard to meet women at 335? No, 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 no. I was 185 on Match.com. <laughs> oh yeah, right? Yeah, six pack kicking. Photoshop rocks, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I am married. Next month, next month is my 16 year wedding anniversary. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, so sorry about your luck ladies, this ship has sailed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Love my wife. My wife is actually the first and only woman I have ever dated. Okay, thanks for making that so weird, everybody. That couldn't have been, that couldn't have been any more awkward at all. Just the blank stares. Then as it was silent, one guy in the back goes, woo! Did you hear that guy? I appreciate him trying to fill the silence. Thank you. Thank you, Ric Flair. Woo! People ask me since my wife, my wife, my very first date was with my wife. And people ask me, you know, and I, I, I didn't have my first date with my wife until I was 23 years old. Okay, again, that was just awkward. This was, you didn't learn from the last one. You didn't learn, I heard a giggle down. And then over there, another wow, really, really? That was my first date, was with my wife, and people want to know, since she's the only woman I've ever dated, how I knew she was the one. And I knew from the very first date, because our very first date was on the 4th of July. And on the night of our very first date, outside my window, I could hear Proud to be an American by Lee Greenwood. <laughs> I felt like I was falling in love for America, you know? It's like, I'm proud to be an American. I'm on a date, I'm 23. <laughs> My wife's a patriot, that's what I'm getting at. She went out with me, she's a patriot. <laughs> Fell in love for America. <laughs> you weren't expecting that on that kick, were you? That kind of threw you. If anyone has some Icy Hot, that would help right now, not gonna lie. <laughs> I got, I got my wife, I got my wife a great gift for our anniversary. Ladies, back me up, this is a great gift, right? For our last anniversary, I got my wife a spa day. That's nice, right? Nice, great, the full day. My wife's gift to me was not good at all. Not good at all. My wife actually had a star named after me. Thank you for laughing, you right there. Those of you awing, you're only awing because it never happened to you. It's not real. It's not a real thing. It's a guy in his basement with a printer. That's what it is. There are people in their backyards going, ooh, there's Andromeda, the beautiful princess. Uh oh, and there's Orion, the mighty hunter. Uh oh, and there's Dan, the gap tooth guy from Ohio. <laughs> they don't say that. They don't name stars after guys who look like Incrediboy from The Incredibles. That's not... A... Thank, you. Thank you. I wish that one didn't work so well, I'm not gonna lie. I really wish... I really wish that one didn't work. I wish people... 
Like, I don't see that at all. I don't get that joke. I hope that one doesn't make the special because it's not good. My wife and I, we have a daughter who's six. We got some parents out there. Right on. How many kids, sir? Five, eight, nine, 12, how many? Three. Is that confirmed? Yes, it's correct. We have two, three. I love my daughter and, and my daughter was the most blessed event in our entire lives because the doctors told my wife and I that we could never conceive. So the minute I held my daughter in the nursery, that was the greatest night of my entire life. But it was a weird day for me too because that time when I held my daughter, that was the first time I'd held a child in my hands for 20 years. I know, right? Nothing good comes from holding other people's kids. <laughs> but they always want you to do that, right? They were like that with me. They're like, Dan, hold the baby. Why won't you hold the baby? Dan, hold I don't want to hold your baby. I'm really clumsy. <laughs> And I am clumsy, that's why I use the baby monitors for safety when my daughter was younger, had to use the baby monitors. Anyone out there use the baby monitors for safety? Cool, two people, great, that's great. Anybody else here care about safety at all? You guys use car seats or is duct tape cool for you people, duct tape? It's got silver, it's got thread, it ain't going nowhere. Strapped in. They have new baby monitors now that not only allow you to hear the baby, yeah, see the baby, talk back to the baby. You heard this? Talk back, I'm sure this won't traumatize babies at all. And this technology works so well at drive through windows, like, go back to sleep. <laughs> Sure, babies will never hear the wrong thing either, you know? Like you go, coochie, coochie, coo. Baby hears, ah, boogeyman, kill you. <laughs> He's in the closet, daddy. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of money growing up, which was tough. Our family, we didn't have a lot of money. We had to buy a lot of generic things. You know, generic cereal, generic shoes. It made things weird. Our family couldn't even afford officially licensed sports merchandise. I know, right? So it made our Christmases really weird. You know, I'd open up a package. I'm like, oh, it's a football jersey. My favorite team, the Dallas Ranch Hands. I sure hope they can beat the Pittsburgh metal producers this year and, and win the awesome bowl. We didn't have a lot of money. We don't have a lot of money. You gotta learn to be creative, right? You gotta learn to be creative when you don't have a lot of money. Like, have you ever done this? Have you ever done this? Have you ever taken a cash advance on your credit card just to make your credit card's minimum payment? <laughs> have you ever done that? That's fun. It's like, wait till they discover this, am I right? So I had a lot of jobs too growing up, a lot of jobs before I became this hot shot comedian you see up here. <laughs> Thank you, Devaney. <laughs> First. <laughs> My sis has my back. <laughs> First job ever had, I worked at a convenience store. Anyone out there ever work at a convenience store? <laughs> Two of you, cool. The rest of you guys all start at the top. Congratulations, that's fantastic. <laughs> Hedge funds to run right out of high school, right everybody? <laughs> I own a convenience store. <laughs> time enough to lean, time enough to clean. <laughs> But now I'm on the road doing comedy, which is awesome. It's a lot of fun coming to great places like here. But I got a lot of time to think. 
because I'm away from my daughter, away from my family, away from my wife. And I was thinking to myself the other week how awesome it would be to have a time machine. Wouldn't that be awesome everybody have a time machine? I wouldn't go back and see like the dinosaurs or the Declaration of Independence or anything like that. No, with my time machine, I would go back to the Best Buy in October of 1999. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now that way I could stop myself from buying that Lou Bega CD with Mambo number five. Because that song's ter terrible, Tavon, and I want my 1399 back. And I did it all the time with those songs, all the time back then. Lou Bega, I bought it. Chumba Wumba? You remember that? I get knocked down, but I get up again. You never I bought that. I own that album. All those songs, you guys remember this one? Brother Pele's in the back, Sweet Xena's in the front, cruising down the freeway in the hot, hot sun. How bizarre. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I bought it <laughs> on CD and cassette. <laughs> Been uh, losing weight, I mentioned that earlier. Thanks again for noticing, pal. <laughs> Wait, man, I've had to lose weight. Anyone out there dieting with me right now? Anyone dieting? It's hard, isn't it? It's so hard. Like, why is it that when you're on a diet, everyone has to let you know they have the metabolism of a chihuahua on Red Bull? Why are they saying that? Like, I, I, I can eat anything. You're like, hmm. That was even higher, wasn't it, Holly? Did you see that? Tweaked a hammy on that one. Lose weight, man. I was 335. That's hard. I especially hated being fat at an amusement park. Right? Have you seen those seats? I know, and I hated waiting in line for an hour to find out I couldn't jam my butt into the teacups. It happened. Every single ride has a sign riders need to be this tall. There's no sign riders need a butt this small. That's what I need. You know, something I could just back into. It's like, hey, Dan, the talking moose says your butt's just too dang big. Well, what if I clench? That's what I'd say. <laughs> Had to lose weight. Sometimes you talk to people that are on a diet and they're just not on the same level of a diet as you are. You know, I talked to somebody one time, they're like, oh, I'm trying to lose three pounds for bikini season. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm trying to lose a coronary blockage. So really, you and I, apples and oranges is what that is. <laughs> These commercials will try to fool you. They'll try to fool you. Like I saw this commercial for bacon strips, the food for dogs, you know this one? Little dog runs around, he yells, it's bacon. They say in this commercial, <laughs> that dogs love it because dogs don't know it's not bacon. <laughs> Who has to trick their dog into eating anything? <laughs> like, no, no, Fido, that's not toilet water, that's Perrier. <laughs> I mean, a dog's favorite scent is other dogs rear end. <laughs> don't have to pretend it's anything else. Love my wife, you guys. 16 years next month. Isn't that awesome? 16 years? We fight, though, from time to time. All couples fight. And every couple's had that one fight, right? You know that fight where you stop and you think to yourself, whoa, did, did, did I just say that? <laughs> I might as well say everything now. <laughs> Now those jeans make you look fat. I know, I can't believe my wife said that. I can't, that was so, that was wildly inappropriate. Not right at all, that was not right. We love each other, we've had to do some strange things together. Like one time we had to go to a couple's wedding shower. Anyone out there been to a couple's wedding shower? You have? You're just moving your arm? Well, you picked the perfect time for it, sir. <laughs> Couples wedding shower, yeah! 
yeah! I had to go to a couple's wedding shower with my wife. And we love each other very much. 16 years, a beautiful child. We love each other very much, but we were fighting when we had to go to that couple's wedding shower. And that is a tough thing because you're going to this event, this party together to celebrate two people in love, celebrating their lives together. And at the time, my wife and I had to pretend that we liked each other. <laughs> it was hard. So we're at the front door. It's like, bah, 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 bah. door opens, hey. <laughs> so excited for you and they made us play games at the couple's wedding shower they make you do this they make you play games they made us play the newlywed game you know you know the game where you have to guess what your spouse says and you leave the room and try to match it up this is a disaster when you're fighting can i just say that because what you're fighting about is just going to passively aggressively bubble to the surface and make things weird for everybody. <laughs> so my wife and I are fighting. We're playing the newlywed game, and I kid you not, this is the very first question they asked us. The first question they asked us is, what was the last thing you and your spouse fought about? <laughs> I know! I couldn't believe it! <laughs> so I just tried to keep it light, right? I'm like... <laughs> leaving the toilet seat up. <laughs> and then they asked my wife, what was the last thing you and your spouse fought about? And she said, how completely unfulfilled I am. Oh my God. <laughs> we laugh like this all the time. These are the jokes. When you're in love as long as we are, we make jokes like this. This is fun. That's what love is. It's joking and laughing. And we do, we laugh a lot, we love a lot. My wife's very, very proud of me. It's a good time in my life. I mentioned that I've lost that weight. I weighed 335 pounds. And my wife's excited about that. You think my wife's excited? My wife is excited. Sometimes she tells me she feels like she's married to somebody else. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it's a compliment, isn't it? It sounds weird. So I've started doing this thing from time to time when it's just the two of us, you know? Sometimes I'll get up, leave the room, shove a pillow under my shirt, run back in and yell, what's going on here? <laughs> what are you doing with Ron Howard's brother? Get out. <laughs> Wish that one didn't work either, not gonna lie. <laughs> it's been a good time in our lives. It's a real good time in my lives. This is something very special to me. My daughter, my daughter who's six, my daughter, my daughter is deaf. And uh, just last year, she had successful cochlear implant surgery. <laughs> I know, I know. It is an incredible miracle, an incredible blessing, because my daughter can hear me, she can talk to me, she can say words to me, she can say, I love you, she can hear me say, I love you. It is the most amazing thing that's happened to our family, and it comes with an added bonus. Ever since that surgery, my daughter is Bluetooth enabled. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? My kid's got Bluetooth. It's like I got a kid with an upgrade. <laughs> I want to brag to all the other parents. I'm like, yeah, we put Bluetooth in on this one. <laughs> she just started kindergarten. That's a bittersweet time, isn't it? You guys remember your first day of kindergarten? You remember it? I remember my first day of kindergarten. I was wearing a Fonzie t-shirt. <laughs> you remember Fonzie? I was wearing a Henry Winkler t-shirt. I was the only kindergartner who understood the benefits of a reverse mortgage. I was the only one. <laughs> but I, I worry about my daughter at kindergarten. I worry about bullying. Bullying's a thing right now. And it would be awful. Wouldn't it be terrible if some kids bullied my daughter because she had cochlear implants? Wouldn't that be awful? So I've decided, I've already told her this, I've told everyone this, if my daughter is ever bullied because of her cochlear implants, I will go to that schoolyard. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> and I will show them a bully. Yeah. I will! I will! I'll go right up to that fence and I'll be like, hey, 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 
That Hello Kitty backpack makes you look fat, Michaela. That's what I'll do. <laughs> you got Taylor Swift tickets? Uh-uh. <laughs> a lot of rock stars died way too young, and that's a tragedy, isn't it? It is. But at least we don't have to see them sell out years down the road, am I right? Am I right? Thank you. Like, could you imagine if Jim Morrison were still alive? From The Doors, you turn on the television. Hi, I'm Jim Morrison, lead singer of The Doors. 40 years ago, I was a dangerous rock and roll singer. When I was on stage, I had no worries. But now, I worry about bladder control problems. <laughs> That's why I use Depends. <laughs> Thanks to Depends, my leaky bladder won't break on through to the other side. <laughs> like, come on, baby, buy the diaper. Depends are gonna keep you dry. <laughs> the real reason I got into comedy, everybody, is because I, I got into show business because I always wanted my own soap commercial. <laughs> Hear me out. You've seen a soap commercial, right? You know that moment? You know that moment where they smell the soap and all is right with the world? It doesn't matter, they just... <sighs> I want that! So, I have written my own soap commercial that I would like to share with all of you. I want that moment, no matter what's going on in my life, I want that... <sighs> But I need some help. I need some help in this soap commercial. There's gonna be a time where I'm gonna to turn to you and I'm gonna say, but I've got the world by a rope. And I'm gonna to turn to you and you're all gonna go, ha! Okay, you got that? Todd? Yeah, okay. Let's try it. But I got the world by a rope. Ha! I couldn't kick as high that time. I'm hurt. This is my soap commercial. <coughs> All is right with the world when you smell that soap. My soap commercial, the reason I do this. <laughs> my dog ran off last evening. My boss thinks I'm a jerk. My sciatica is flaring up and the ointment doesn't work. But coast, the fresh scent opens your eyes. Because of coast, I don't have to cry. With that bar of coast, I believe that I can fly. at 10. My car is stalling, getting fired again. But I got the world by a rope. <laughs> I can't believe you did it. I didn't think even Todd did it. to that. 